Islam, like a precious gem, has many beautiful facets. Explore with us now the facets of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes. For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about another of the beautiful facets of Islam. And in this particular one, I'm very satisfied with it because that's the facet. It's called satisfy. Now, when we talk about satisfy, what do we mean by that? To be satisfied is to be complete. To be satisfied is to have enough. To be satisfied is to be pleased. So what we want to know now, we're going to talk about the purpose of our life. Our purpose to worship our Lord, recognizing Him as one, the one God, and we're going to do our best to satisfy Him. How? By doing what He wants us to do. And then in return, He will satisfy us. How? By giving us what we want. What is it that every human wants? Peace. And how will we get it? By satisfying our Lord and performing according to what he has mandated. The rules or commandments of our Lord are rather simple. Just as the people before us were not ordered anything more than to worship Allah alone, without any partners. Establish the regular salah or prayers, and pay the zakah, which means the poor do or charity. And this is the way of life that's been ordained for us by our Lord, just as it was for the people before. Because actually, this way of life, this deen has never really changed. It's always been essentially the same thing. Whether you call it deen or you call it Islam, it doesn't matter. What matters is, do you really do it? Do you really try to satisfy your Lord? Because if you think about it, it doesn't matter who you satisfy in this world. Let's say, for instance, you make somebody happy. Your parents are satisfied with you, which is a very good thing in Islam. But if your Lord's not satisfied, what will be the benefit? Your wife, your children, your boss at work, even your friends. We're always trying to please others. I want to make them happy. I want to make them happy. But is this enough? And what if I do so at the expense of making my Lord unsatisfied with me? And some people, they'll do a lot of things to show off for their friends. They want to act like big macho man, you know? Want to show off. Some people drinking, drugs, smoking alcohol, all of the bad things, and they think it's something big to show off for their friends. Others show off by spending money. I want to show how I am. Look at this. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Even they do some things for other people to show off. Look, look what I'm doing. See? Trying to satisfy other people. But if it didn't satisfy the Lord above, what would be the benefit? There is a saying from Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, that I really like, because it is so simple, yet it makes so much sense when we talk about this word satisfy. He said, whoever tries to please the people at the expense of displeasing their Lord, they've already displeased their Lord. And he's going to make the people displeased with them anyway. But whoever tries to please his Lord, even if it's at the expense of displeasing the people, his Lord will be pleased with him. And he will make the people pleased with him too. Allah is looking at your heart always. Your intentions are a very important part of what you do. So because you have the intention to do these good works, he counts it as though you did it because he knows you have to do these other things as well. So don't be afraid to take care of the daily things you have to do, but do plan to do as much as you can for your Lord as you can do it. And this will help you to keep another beautiful facet called balance that we've talked about as well. 
those who come to the right belief, they believe there's only one God, and they want to worship him on his terms. Those people who do that, and then they put that into practice as best they can, they've already pleased their Lord. And he's pleased with them, and he will make them be pleased. He will make them be pleased by giving them what they really want. A human being seeks after peace more than anything else. The reason we do the things that we do is because we think that those things will ultimately give us the peace, give us the satisfaction that we're looking for. But will they? If I get the education that I've always wanted, Will it really give me the peace? If I get the job, the position, will it really give me the peace that I want? If I get the rank in the military, will it really give me the peace? The wife, the house, the children, the fancy car, all of these things we strive, we work for, because we want to be satisfied. We want to be pleased with these things. We want to feel like, Ah, now I'm satisfied. I have my place in the Bahamas. Huh? I have my place on the lake or my place on the river that I can retire to and be satisfied. But will I ever really achieve that? Because when I actually get to that home in the Bahamas or on the riverside or the lake, wherever it is, when I get there, I'll find that I have to work on it. The roof is leaking. The plumbing needs fixing. The electrical things need work on it. Oh, they have to take care of the grass. Oh, this tree has fallen over on the roof. So many problems. And the reason because I'm trying to be satisfied with the wrong thing. All of us working, striving, trying to get what? This peace, this satisfaction. But it won't come. It won't come until we realize that the only thing satisfying us is to have the right belief and the right action to go with it. Then, no matter what else happens, it'll be okay. Listen to this. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used a word in Arabic called ajib. This word ajib, it means amazing. Ajiban. The condition of the believer is amazing because only good comes his way. When any of the good things of life come to him, he's appreciative and he thanks his Lord. Alhamdulillah. But any difficulty, any kind of fitna, calamity or trial comes his way. He makes sabr. He's patient with his Lord. And it's good for him. It's good for him. But it's only in the case of the believer. We find that this attitude of finding satisfaction in the material things doesn't work. What we seek for in what's called hayat dunya the material world, as we seek and strive and run for that, we find it runs away from us. As I try to get close to it, it runs away. But when we strive and work for the things of akhir, meaning the next life, I find that it's very nice because when I work for that, that's something that no matter how I work toward it, it will build and it'll never go away because it's permanent. That life is the only permanent life. In fact, we find in Surah Ankabu, chapter 29, verse 64 of the Quran, the very clear teaching that this life, this Hayat dunya that we're living in every day, this is just frivolous. This is folly. This is not the real life. The real life is waiting for us, and it's eternal, and it won't go away. You want to be satisfied? I know I do. And the only satisfaction is going to come in the proper understanding and application of these teachings, of these facets, these facets in Islam. So many times when we look to the things that we want this life, it doesn't work. But just with a little bit, a little bit of effort, a little bit of imagination, and start to do what? To work for the things of the afterlife. You don't have to give up your life here, but 
you work alongside that with the things for the next life. And you'll find it's nice, very peaceful, very beautiful. We want to take a break and give you a chance to reflect on what we've been talking about here with this particular facet, this facet of Islam. Satisfy, satisfy. Taking a break, gonna be right back, don't go away. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Yusuf Estes, your host here on Facets of Islam. We've been talking about the subject of satisfy. And we talked about the concept of Allah, God Almighty, being satisfied with us and us being satisfied with him in this life. We touched a little bit on the subject of being satisfied in the next life. Let us look now to the Quran and consider some of the things that are promised for those who satisfy the conditions of the kalama of la ilaha illallah. When a person really believes that there's only one God and they begin to do the deeds of righteousness, they begin to satisfy the condition of being a human being in good status with their Lord. Now, the promise. The promise in the Quran is for those who believe and do good works to be in paradise, to be in one of the many levels of paradise wherein they will find the most beautiful of treasures. They will find gardens underneath which rivers are flowing. They'll find food of all descriptions that's most delicious, rivers of milk, honey, and more. They will find their pleasant faces. They will find those who will be greeting them also satisfied, saying peace, salam, salam, wearing beautiful clothing, reclining on couches, so lovely, and the temperature will be just right, not hot, not cold, but just the proper coolness to satisfy. Now this is promised for those who come to the right belief and do good works, satisfied. In the Quran, Allah tells it like this. For those who believe, he said, al those who amanu, believe, wa'amilu, and they have good deeds, salihat, of righteousness. For them is promised, promised the genital firdos, which is the highest, the highest level. Genital na'im, which is the paradise of the favor of their Lord. All of these paradises mentioned, and it says, underneath which rivers flow, beautiful gardens, beyond your imagination, what the eye has never beheld, the ear has never heard, the taste, the smells, everything totally satisfied. Radi Allahu an wa radu an. It means Allah is satisfied, pleased with them, and they're pleased with their Lord. And this is promise for those who sacrifice, sacrifice in this life for the next life. At the same time, we realize that Islam is not about extremism. And this definitely needs to be mentioned because in order to satisfy the conditions of Islam, there has to be this peace. And we don't find this peace. We don't find this balance, another beautiful facet of Islam. We don't find those things in extremism. Everything has to be according to the balance, according to the peace, and according to this, this beautiful coming together of all these facets. And then that satisfies. Satisfies the mind, the soul, the heart. Satisfies the Lord above. It all works together. Everything just like beautiful clockwork coming together. Satisfied. One of the things when we talk about the satisfaction is that we won't really, ourselves in this life, consider it enough. We'll keep working as long as we can. We won't sit back and say, ah, oh, I've done enough for today. I'm satisfied. No, no, no. That's not the kind of satisfaction that we've been talking about. Actually, what we mean here is that we'll work even harder 
to be sure that we do satisfy and please our Lord. How? How can I be sure? How can I know without doubt that I'm doing the thing that will please my Lord the most? And I recall that when I first came into Islam, I learned something very important, very valuable. And that is that you cannot guarantee to anybody they are going to be successful with their Lord unless he is pleased, unless he's satisfied. And you won't really know that till the day of judgment. So the striving and the working is always a part and parcel of the human being in this life. What about the people? That while I was in this life, I went around hurting people, saying things against them or to them, maybe insulting somebody, maybe speaking behind their back, carrying tales. All of these things are bad, of course, but they're even worse on the Day of Judgment. Because now, even though, let us say, that the person's salah is perfect, he has done all of his prayers, mashallah, lovely, lovely. And he avoided the Day of Judgment. He's ready to go to the paradise. Let me in, let me in, he's saying. But no, there's another matter to be satisfied. What is it? The people that you have damaged are standing there waiting for their rights. And you will not enter paradise unless and until the rights of others have been satisfied. And they will want their rights. And until their rights are satisfied, you're not going to enter the paradise. Pretty scary, isn't it, when you think about it? We have to work each day as though it were our last day. We don't know how many days we have left. Oh, sure, you might have done a lot of good deeds in your life, but then... After a while, you start thinking, you know, I did all these good deeds. That ought to be good enough to satisfy. I can go out and do what I want to now. Maybe I'll do X or Y or Z or something, you know. Don't want to give you any ideas. <laughs> so now, though, the person does some bad deeds and he dies in that condition, he dies in a very miserable, miserable situation because all the work that he did in the beginning can be canceled out by doing all this bad now. Let me explain how that works, if I can. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that a person would go through the whole life acting so bad, so evil, that he was like somebody from hellfire. He'd be so close that he could almost put his hand into it. But then before he dies, what's been written for him overtakes him, and he acts like the people of paradise. He begins to change. He does the righteous things. He's doing good deeds. He believes correctly. He's trying to make amends, basically, for what he's done in the past to satisfy that. And it does. It satisfies your Lord. And guess what happens? As a result, he dies on this, and he goes to paradise. But then there'll be another person, he said, who will go through the whole life acting like somebody from paradise, somebody from Jannah. Oh, and he does good deeds, and he's kind and he's generous, and he worships his Lord. He does this, he does that. But then, when he's so close, he could almost put his hand right into the paradise. But what's written for him overtakes him. And he begins to act like the people of the hellfire, doing X, Y, and Z, doing these bad, evil things, forgetting about his Lord, not satisfying this condition, and then he dies, and then as a result of this, he enters into the hellfire. And we ask Allah to save all of us from that. This is a very important facet of Islam, to always keep in mind that we strive, we strive every day hard to satisfy, to satisfy our Lord above. Although we know he is perfect, absolutely perfect in every aspect. And we know we are not. And we could never be perfect. But what we know as Muslims is we weren't created to be perfect. Although we were created perfect, but we weren't created to be perfect. Meaning that we have free will, free choice. That at any time that you want to change how you are, you can do so whether it be for the good 
out for the bad. It's up to you. It's up to me. We each make our own choices, right? So here's your chance for this good choice. This good choice to satisfy. Now, in some religions, they might teach you that you can never satisfy your Lord, so somebody has to sacrifice for you. Some religions in the past have actually had the notion of throwing innocent people into a fire, into a volcano, throwing the virgin into the volcano or into the river. They used to do that in the Nile River, thinking that that would satisfy the God of the river, and then they would have water that would come. But in Islam, we don't have that. No, the only sacrifice that Allah is going to accept is your sacrifice. Your sacrifice of what? Give up the false pride, stay away from the lies, come to the reality that there really is one God. He's one, not two or three or 30,000. It's just one. And you worship him as such. And then try your best to satisfy him even if it's something small. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us that you could even take this strip out of a date stone. <laughs> I don't know if you ever ate dates, but there's a pit or stone in there. You take it out, and it has this thread laying over it. He said you could even give this, give this thread of a date stone in charity. If it was done with sincerity, that that would count. That could count to satisfy your Lord. Because he's not looking for quantity, is he? What's important with your Lord is sincerity. Because when you're sincere, really sincere with your Lord, that will satisfy. And we ask Almighty Allah that he accept this, our effort here in our studios and with our television programming. We ask him to be satisfied with what we're doing, and we hope it will help you to satisfy your Lord. This is Yusuf Estes reminding you that these facets, these beautiful facets of Islam, will only work, will only be satisfied if you put them into practice. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa